The A340 was a significant development at the time of its launch, marking Airbus's entry into the quadjet market and providing healthy competition for its rivals. Production of the jet ended in 2011, but it remains in service with several airlines. Let's take a look through the history and development of the A340 and how it eventually fell out of favour with airlines. The story of the A340 starts with the A300 and A320. The A300 was Airbus's first aircraft in 1972 and was a twin-engine, twin-aisle aircraft. Following initial success with this, Airbus went on in the early 1980s to create a new twin-engine, single-aisle aircraft. There was a gap in the market here, with the US-manufactured Boeing 737 dominating and no European alternative. With the A320 project launched and on the way to delivery, Airbus started to look at the market for larger, wide-body aircraft. Again, there was an opportunity to compete with Boeing in this area, especially with the 747 becoming popular. A big question, however, was whether to develop a twin-engine or a four-engine wide-body. At the time, there were restrictions on how far twin-engine aircraft could fly from diversion airports, limiting their use for many airlines. Airbus's Vice President for Strategic Planning, Adam Brown, explained his views in a Flight Global article. There was much internal debate whether to go with the big twin or the quad. North American operators were clearly in favor of a twin, while the Asians wanted a quad. In Europe, opinion was split between the two. The majority of potential customers were in favor of a quad, despite the fact in certain conditions it's more costly to operate than a twin. They liked that it could be ferried with one engine out and could fly anywhere. Remember, ETOPS hadn't begun then. The solution was to develop two aircraft, a twin jet and a quad jet. This would meet the needs of both sets of customers, and there would be savings by developing both aircraft together. There were two prototypes in development. The TA-9 was a twin engine with a range of 6,100 kilometers or 3,300 nautical miles, while the TA-11 was a four-engine jet with a range of up to 12,650 kilometers or 6,830 nautical miles. In 1986, these projects moved forward and became the A330 and A340. Airbus board chairman Franz Josef Strauss said at the time, Airbus is now in a position to finalize the detailed technical definition of the TA-9, which is now officially designated the A330, and the TA-11, now called the A340, with potential launch customer airlines, and to discuss with them the terms and conditions for launch commitments. Developing the two aircraft together brought many advantages, including the same basic fuselage and wing system, and many structural components and systems, as well as a common flight deck. This approach saved money and time, bringing two aircraft types to market faster and cheaper. Airbus also made further savings by using designs from the A300 and A320. The fuselage of the A330 or A340 is based on a stretched A300 fuselage, while fly-by-wire controls and cockpit were inherited from the A320. Aside from engine number, the A340 also has a larger wing and an additional middle rear landing gear. This middle landing gear is unusual as most heavy aircraft use two main gears with increased wheels to handle the extra load. The A340 and most of its variants have greater capacity and greater range than the A330. Here are the models compared. The A330-200 can carry 246 passengers in two classes to a range of 7,250 nautical miles. The A340-500 can carry 293 passengers in three classes to a range of 9,000 nautical miles. The A330-300 can carry 300 passengers in two classes to a range of 6,350 nautical miles. The A340-200 can carry 303 passengers in two classes to a range of 7,600 nautical miles. The A340-300 can carry 335 passengers in two classes to 7,150 nautical miles, and the A340-600 can carry 380 passengers in three classes to a range of 7,550 nautical miles. The main selling point of the A340 was its four engines, not necessarily its increased capacity or range. Having four engines enabled it to operate longer overwater flights. This was something for which the A330 was restricted at the time. ETOPS, Extended Range Twin Engine Operational Performance Standards, were introduced in the early 1980s to reflect the increasing safety and performance of twin engine aircraft and allow them to fly further from a diversion airport. The first rating was given in 1985 to Transworld Airlines flying a 767. 
This allowed it to fly 120 minutes from a diversion airport. Before this, twin engines were restricted to flying 60 minutes from a diversion airport. The first extension pre-ETOPS was given to the A300 with a limit of 90 minutes. These ETOPS regulations did not restrict the A340 quadjet and thus gave airlines more versatility in route planning. The A330 and A340 program was launched in June 1987 and was met with an initial 130 orders from 10 airlines. The A340 took its first flight on October 21, 1991. During testing, problems were discovered with some warping of the wings at cruising speed. Changes had to be made to the underwing to add stiffness. European certification was achieved in December 1992, with US FAA certification following in May 1993. The first aircraft was delivered to Lufthansa on February 2, 1993, and it began service on March 15. There are four variants of the A340. The A340-200 is one of two initial variants offered at launch in 1987. It's the shortest variant of the series, offering a typical two-class capacity of 303. Only 28 of this variant were ordered. The A340-300 was also offered at launch and was actually the first aircraft to be delivered to Lufthansa in 1993. It stretched just over 4 meters from the A340-200, increasing the typical capacity from 303 to 335. The Dash 300 was by far the most popular, with 218 delivered. It was also developed into an enhanced model, the A340-300E, with improved engines and upgraded avionics and cockpit systems. The A340-500 and Dash 600 variants were developed in the late 1990s as higher capacity and increased range upgrades to the original two variants. The Dash 600 first flew in 2001, while the Dash 500 in 2002. The A340-500 was launched in March 2003 by Emirates after the original launch customer, Air Canada, filed for bankruptcy. The Dash 500 is stretched just over 4 meters from the Dash 300. The focus of this jet, however, was its extended range. It offered a similar capacity to the Dash 300, but the range was increased to an impressive 9,000 nautical miles. This was the highest range of any aircraft until beaten by the A350 ULR. The focus of the A340-600 was on capacity. It offered a similar passenger capacity to the Boeing 747, but added additional cargo space. Virgin Atlantic was the launch customer in August 2002. It had a typical capacity of 380 and was the longest aircraft in service at the time, beating both the A380 and the Boeing 747-400. The Dash 600 was much more popular than the Dash 500. Airbus delivered 97 aircraft as opposed to just 32 of the Dash 500. One of the aims of the A340 was to replace aging quadjets, including the Boeing 707 and Douglas DC-8. This was a market Airbus had not yet entered, but saw an opportunity to be a more efficient competitor, using updated technology. The A340 also got an early boost when problems were found with a McDonnell Douglas MD-11. This trijet widebody first flew in January 1990, just before the A340. It soon became apparent, though, that it did not meet expectations for range and fuel efficiency. This was a problem for several airlines. In particular, Singapore Airlines had hoped to operate it between Singapore and Paris, but this would not be possible. As a result, it switched its order for MD-11 aircraft to A340-300s. Production of the MD-11 ceased in 1998, partly as a result of competition from the A340, among other jets. In all, 377 A340 aircraft have been delivered to 48 airlines. The largest operators of the A340 have included the following airlines. This is based on orders and deliveries data from Airbus. Some airlines have operated more aircraft through leases or second-hand purchases. Lufthansa has been the largest operator of the A340, ordering 59 aircraft in total and operating up to 62. Iberia took delivery of the A340-300 in 1996 and the A340-600 in 2003. It first ordered three of the larger aircraft, intending to replace its aging Boeing 747-300 aircraft. It went on to operate 18 A340-600s, purchasing 16 and taking two on lease. Iberia confirmed the retirement of its entire A340 fleet in June 2020, Virgin Atlantic has used the A340 extensively for its long-haul flights. 
It took delivery of its first A340-300 in April 1993. It added the A340-600 in August 2002 and was the type's launch customer. In total, it operated 29 A340s, 10-300s and 19-600s. Virgin Atlantic confirmed the retirement of its last three aircraft in April 2020, noting at the time that these three aircraft had flown a combined total of almost 180,000 hours in the sky across more than 21,000 flights. Singapore Airlines had initially ordered the MD-11, but had switched this to the A340 when the range of the MD-11 did not hold up in testing. It purchased 17 A340-300 aircraft in 1996, intended for use on long-haul routes that did not need the capacity of the Boeing 747. The retirement of the A340-300s was also unusual. As explained in a New York Times article in 1999, they were sold to Boeing as part of a deal to introduce the 777. The last A340 was retired from the fleet in 2013. Air France purchased 14 A340-300s in 1993. It's operated 29 A340s since then. The last A340 was retired in May 2020. Cathay Pacific leased four A340-200 aircraft in 1994 before ordering the A340-300 from Airbus in 1996. It also went on to use the A340-600 through leases. In all, it operated 24 A340s over time. It removed the A340-600 from service in 2009. All aircraft then moved to Hainan Airlines until they were scrapped in 2015. The A340-300 aircraft, however, remained in the Cathay Pacific fleet until 2015. Emirates ordered 10 A340-500 aircraft and retired its last A340 in 2016. It also operated eight A340-300 aircraft, which weren't ordered directly from Airbus. As we mentioned earlier, the A340 at the time of its launch was designed to get around restrictions on twin-engine aircraft. In the years that followed, however, restrictions were increasingly lifted on twin-engine aircraft, with ETOPS 180 first given in 1989. The Boeing 777 became the first aircraft to receive this rating on launch. Higher ratings followed and the A330 was rated ETOPS 240 in 2009, while the 777 achieved ETOPS 330. Ratings now go as high as ETOPS 370 for the A350. With limits this high, there are very few restrictions on where these twin jets can operate. With these improvements, airlines have moved to twin engines as they're cheaper to buy, maintain and operate. The Boeing 777 soon became the main competitor to the A340, offering the efficiency improvement of two engines but also minimal differences in capacity. Airbus announced the end of the A340 program in November 2011. Bertrand Grabowski, managing director of the transport group at DVB Bank, said the following. In an environment where the fuel price is high, the A340 has had no chance to compete against similar twin engines, and the current lease rates and values of this aircraft reflect the deep resistance of any airlines to continue operating it. According to the Airbus data for the end of July 2020, only 35 operators of the A340 remained, and only eight of these with a fleet of more than five aircraft. Many retired aircraft have found new homes, though, and with their relatively young age, they will likely still be flying for some years to come. One of Virgin Atlantic's aircraft, for example, has moved to Nigeria's Asman Air, and three to Malath Aero. Given the dramatic decline in A340s and some early retirement of young aircraft, it's tempting to call the A340 a failure. That, however, does not really explain it well. The quad jet served its purpose at the time, but the situation has changed drastically since then, leading to its rapid downfall. What are your thoughts on the Airbus A340 program? Did you enjoy flying in it? Let us know in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.